Hello, Robert speaking. Hello, Robert. It's Stelios. Hello, Stelios. How are you? You keeping okay? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm well. And what about yourself? Um, well, nice, beautiful day. It's a shame we got to be inside, isn't it? But uh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But uh, you're, you're keeping virus free and in, and in good health. Yeah, I'm drinking lots of tonic water and taking um, multivitamins and zinc um, every other day. So I've yeah. heard that that's very good against viruses. So it, m it might not cure you of coronavirus, but if you catch it, you'll, you, you know, it'll, it'll reduce the multiplication in your body. So it's not quite so devastating yes. upon you. So, yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah. The, the immune system, our natural immune system is, is really the best defense and bolstering that up makes a lot yeah. of sense. But I've also heard that the quinine in tonic water, it's an anti-malarial. That's yes. pretty effective when it's mixed with zinc. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but that's 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 what I'm um, backing myself on. Stelios, where are you based? Where, where is your Kingdom Hall based? Are you, you know I'm based in Plymouth. Um, yes, I got that from your text. I, I'm actually in Billericay in Essex. Ah, yes. You've told me before. Sorry, I, I forgot no. about that. Billericay, yes. So I'm, I'm quite yeah. some work. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I um, um, when I first got your telephone number, I sort of assumed you were in the Essex area. I, I had no idea you were quite so far away. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, well, anyway, it, it's nice that technology, make, you know, makes it possible that we can at least have this yes. conversation. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, well, as, as you know, I'm looking quite. A, I'm looking at quite a few topics. I mean, we discussed the other day, didn't we? We had a, a brief conversation the other day. Yes. yes, yes. Now, I've got to. I've got to um, answers to your questions about the United Nations and that European Association. Yes. Uh, yes. The the purpose of the um, uh, being associated as a non governmental organisation. It was really from the point of view of lobbying for religious freedom and the right of, um, of conscience to pursue our activities of preaching and meeting, meeting together for worship. So it was from, from the point of view of human rights. Um, and, uh, and the reason the organisation left the United Nations is because... Um, in the end, it wasn't proven. It was not proving to be an, an effective forum. Whereas the uh, European Association could, could I just comment? Could I co comment on the UN before you go on to sure. OSCE? Um, no, um, you left the United Nations on the 9th of October two thousand and one. Yes. And the day before, on the eighth of October two thousand and one, there was a Guardian exposure. The Guardian newspaper based in London, did an exposure on the Jehovah's Witnesses being members of the UN, whilst at the same time you claimed that the UN was satanic. Um, and if you agree that you are involved in political lobbying, then you're involved in politics, which you, you claim to be no part of the world, you see. That's the, that's the problem. And not only that, remember, you had to, to comply with your UN membership from 1992 to 2001, you had to promote the aims and the ideals of the UN in your literature. Now, that's the problem, Stelios, because you were doing this usually in the awake, once or twice a year, mostly in the awake, once in the Watchtower and occasionally in some other literature. But you were promoting the aims and the ideals of the UN in your literature. Now, if you're no part of the world and if the UN is the eighth head of the satanic scarlet colored wild beast as you claim in the book of revelation the revelation its grand climax at hand page 253 to 254 then why are you members of the un and you left because you were exposed it was it was it was the exposure of the hypocrisy that got you to leave but you're still connected with the un today through osce but i'll i'll listen to your reply yes um, yeah the um I mean, I, I certainly take your point. Those are good points you, you've made, uh, Richard, um, Robert. Yeah. Um, the, um, I mean, the, 
United Nations, um, there are many aspects of the United Nations that are admirable. You know, the, the, what it's trying to do with regard to human rights, um, uh, the UNESCO, uh, UNICEF, uh, they are a World Health Organization. Um, so there are a number of um, non-political uh, sides to the United Nations. Um, and the one that um, uh, we as Jehovah's Witnesses are particularly interested in is from the human rights aspect. Um, whether the um, exposure was instrumental in uh, leaving the United Nations or whether it just happened to coincide, I, I just don't know. Well, it was within um, a period of 24 hours, mate, so it wasn't... It wasn't, it wasn't a coincidence. They left within twenty-four hours of the publication of that Guardian article. Sorry to interrupt you, Stelios, but that's yes. not a coincidence. Um, yeah, I, unfortunately, I'm not uh, um, privy to what what was this, the decision making that that led to leaving. I mean, I'm, I, I I quite understand the point you're making, and. Um, 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 I, I, I cannot, um, I cannot um, um, argue against it. Mm -hmm. You know, from the, from the point of view, I mean, you're quite right. Uh, we we are no part of the world when it comes to the controversies between um, uh, nations and um, and the uh, uh, the. Um, the, the machinations of what goes on uh, in world politics, um, and we we don't get involved in that. We, uh, for, for my side, personally, just as a, 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 an aside, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've done a, I've done a lot of work for the British government, but that's always been in the um, in the non-military. Uh, it, it's always. Being on the the, the civil side um, you know, in the government in the Department of Health. I don't. I, I don't. I don't need to know about your private private life, Stelios. No. I don't want to know any private no. details. But okay, you've done work for the British government. I understand that. Yes. Um, I, I, the, 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 the reason I mention that, Robert, is just because um, um, I, I do draw a distinction between um, the necessary aspects of administration. And and uh, the political uh, and military aspects, and in the same way, you look at the United Nations. There are, um, as I said earlier, many admirable aspects to it. Uh, it, it the fact that it tries to be a peacekeeping organisation um, and get involved in disputes, and um, that's a side that. Uh, uh, we don't get involved in. Um, I think part of the problem for Jehovah's Witnesses, um, I'm, I'm thinking about the situation in Russia at the moment. Um, I actually got the wrong end of the stick. I thought Jehovah's Witnesses were complete innocent victims in Russia and that the Russian government was coming down on them very unfairly. I've actually found out that that's not the case. Um, the, I mean, uh, your literature going back to the 1920s, which I've got, demonises every government on earth. It says absolutely, I, I mean, I can, I can, I can pull it up on the computer if you like, because I've got scans of my my books on on my computer. But I mean, it demonises every government on earth. It demonises the Catholics. It demonises the Protestants. Um, it demonizes every government on earth and this is this is even given in what does the bible really teach page 31 under the title who rules the world at the bottom of the page says jesus never doubted that satan is the ruler of this world that's paragraph 11 page 31 what does the bible really teach and that's repeated on the next page page 32 paragraph 12 in fact jesus specifically referred to satan as the ruler of this world so it's implying that satan rules every government of this world now the russian government have taken umbrage at that not surprisingly if you if you're going to go to russia with your literature 
and say that every government on earth, including President Putin's government, is of the devil, the Russian government do have a right to um, take umbrage at that and not be happy with that. But the Jehovah's Witnesses have made it worse. I know that Jehovah's Witnesses have been imprisoned in Russia. I wish that hadn't happened, because I think if you imprison people, um, you actually make martyrs of people and you tend to um, increase religious zealotry. So I think that the Russian government perhaps should have taken a completely different tactic. But here's the thing. When the Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia were in prison, I didn't know about this. I found out about this recently and I was horrified. Jehovah's Witnesses were instructed around the world to write to the uh, president of the court and to the president of Russia, Mr. Putin, at the Kremlin. And the Kremlin has been flooded with tens of millions of letters, as has the head of the court that sentenced this Jehovah's Witnesses. Not, not thousands, not even hundreds of thousands, tens of millions of letters have been flooding into the Kremlin. Uh, and there's the, not just the, the Kremlin can't cope with the increase in postage, despite hiring numerous staff just to try and um, distinguish real correspondence from Jehovah's Witness correspondence. But the um, court has actually uh, been swamped by this information and the Russian Postal Service can't cope with literally it is tens of millions of letters. Now, that's a direct attack upon the Russian state orchestrated by the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses using ordinary Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, it's the same as a computer virus. If, if, a, if one country launches a computer virus against another country, that is an attack on that country. That is regarded as being similar to a military attack. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses aren't launching computer viruses against the Russian state, but you have, um, through writing tens of millions of letters, you've decided to clog up the Russian Postal Service and severely damage the efficiency and the working efficiency of the Kremlin uh, at Mr. Putin's office in the Kremlin and the Russian court system. That's a direct attack upon the Russian state. And I do feel that um, Jehovah's Witnesses are really partly culpable for what they're experiencing in Russia. I think they deserve to have their property taken away from them. Now, as I say, I wish um, the Russian courts hadn't imprisoned those Jehovah's Witnesses because when you imprison religious people, if you look back through the 2,000 years of church history, it always has a detrimental effect. You, you tend to increase zealotry when you imprison people. Um, you t make a martyr and you'll find that, you know, um, it usually has the opposite effect the state imagines. But certainly uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are launching a direct attack upon the Russian state. That's seditious against the Russian state. Um, so you're not neutral in politics you've decided to attack the Russian government. Mm. Yeah, no, that's an interesting point. That's an interesting point you make, uh, Robert. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I do remember the letter writing campaign that was um, um, back in 2017, I believe, if I seem to recall. I mean, the, what had happened... Um, uh, in the um, in the um, year or so before that, yeah. um, um, an individual, a, a group of individuals, had been arrested, and and eventually their case got appealed to the Supreme Court of Russia. And um, and yes, that letter that letter writing campaign was uh, was before that. Um, um, before the Supreme Court uh, considered the case, and it was an appeal to um, uh, the Russian government to um, to consider its constitution, which guarantees freedom of religion, and uh, to point out that you know the individuals who had been who had been arrested had not committed any crime in law. Um, um, Against um, uh, against the Russian state, the, the Russian state had outlawed them previously, uh, claiming that uh, a book for children and a number of other publications were um, were 
atrocious. Uh, I can't remember the exact expression they use, but basically, um, uh, so, so in fact, there was there was a history going back over several years that that had um, with with improper arrests and so forth, breaking into people's homes, into uh, kingdom halls, planting. Um, um, material and so forth, which had led to these arrests. And ultimately, the case was appealed from one court to the next court and ultimately came to the Supreme Court. And it was then, uh, just before the Supreme Court case, Mm -hmm. that uh, there was this uh, appeal made to uh, the Russian government um, to to let justice prevail. It wasn't wasn't done with a view to... um, um, disrupting Russian government, but I, I, I take the point that you make. Yes, the Kremlin and the, the various um, judicial agencies um, uh, were flooded with uh, uh, lots of letters. No, millions no, of letters. tens of millions of letters, tens of mm. millions of letters, and simply the the office of the presidency of of Russia, Mr. Putin's office, it couldn't function because even by hiring more staff. They just couldn't, they found it very difficult to distinguish real correspondence. They had had to open all the letters to distinguish real correspondence, uh, which is to do with government and this Jehovah's Witness issue. Now, um, there is religious freedom, but the trouble is, if you're going to say that every government on earth and every religious leader on earth, without exception, is of the devil, as the Jehovah's Witnesses teach, then you can hardly expect people to not respond to that. Yes, no, I understand the point you make. Um, the... I, I mean, I mean, I mean. For instance, I I was speaking to a Jehovah's Witness from Grins- Grimsby the other day. Now, I've had several Jehovah's Witnesses tell me that Her Majesty the Queen, who I respect, I think she's a dear lady, who's worked hard for this country for decades. I mean, she's nearly ninety-four. And she's still working in her 90s. I mean, she's an amazing lady. I've been told by several Jehovah's Witnesses that she's influenced by Satan or under the power or under the authority of Satan. Because what does the Bible really teach? Page 31, paragraph 11, quote, Jesus never doubted that Satan is the ruler of this world. And what does the Bible really teach? Page 31. 32 paragraph 12 in fact jesus specifically referred to satan as the ruler of this world and that those verses are interpreted to mean and i would say misinterpreted to to mean that every single government leader on earth is of the devil and every church leader on earth is of the devil every church leader would be the revelation is grand climax at handbook page 235 and I point out there that um, it demonizes every Christian church. It calls it the the harlot. It says it's um, part of the harlot, a Babylonian false harlot. Um, in, a, in other words, in the King James Bible, it calls it the whore of Babylon. Well, page 235 of Revelation is Grand Climax applies that to every Catholic and Protestant church, including, of course, the Anglican church, which Her Majesty the Queen is the head of the Anglican church. Now, I would certainly agree with you. There is a lot of wickedness in this world and many people in all governments and in all religions um, don't serve Christ. And I believe some of them are under the power of the devil. But I do not believe every single person in every single government and every single church other than the Jehovah's Witnesses are all completely and totally under the power of the devil. There are some good Christian people in the British government, in the American government, in the Russian government. Now, there's not many, which is why, yes, governments do do wicked things. And I would also point out, I think churches do wicked things also, because unfortunately, I don't believe there's many genuine Christians in a lot of organized um, religions. But I believe there's some. I believe there's some genuine Christians in the Catholic churches, in the Protestant churches. Yes, the Anglican church is very wishy-washy. Um, they had a good bishop, Bishop J.C. Rall. I read one or two. Of, I've got a book of his sermons. He was a good guy. And there are a few, not many, but there's a few good Anglican people. Um, John Stott. I think he's getting on a bit now, John Stott. 
Um, Her Majesty the Queen has expressed her faith in Christ. I know that in the British government, uh, I know um, he's a bit of a, a, he was in a Pentecostal church, which was a, a bit dodgy, but I know uh, Steve, Steve Double, who's the MP, or I used to know him 20 years ago. He's, the, he's, he's now the MP for Snostel and Yuki. Um, so he has a faith in Christ. Anne Widdicombe is a faithful Catholic who's expressed her faith in Christ on many occasions. Now, I might disagree with some of the teachings of the Catholic Church. I'm strongly opposed to the Mass, and I don't like the wishy-washiness of the Anglicans and the happy clappiness of the Pentecostals. Um, but I believe there are some genuine Christians in all of these denominations. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses say everyone in the British government is of the devil. Everyone in the Russian government is of the devil because the only people who are not of the devil are Jehovah's Witnesses. That is the only organization that God accepts. You claim that God chose. He, Jesus did an inspection and a cleansing work between 1914 and 1919. And in 1919, having cleansed the Watchtower Society, okay, which in 1919 taught that Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection, <laughs> Berean Bible Teachers Notes, page 454, and the Finished Mystery, page 15 and 240. And you were teaching in 1919 that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob would rise from the dead in 1925. That's in the Millions book, page 88 to 90. Uh, and you were using the pyramid to make Bible uh, prophecies uh -huh. until 1927. And you were keeping Christmas until 1927. So, you know, the claim that Jesus did an inspection and a cleansing work between 1914 and 1919 is ridiculous because according to your current teachings, uh, the Watchtower Society or International Bible Students, as you were called then, was teaching absolute heresy in 1919. And there's many, many more heresies you were teaching. You taught in 1919 that the second presence of Christ was 1874. I've got the book Prophecy, published in 1929, and page 65 says that the second presence of Christ is 1874. Well, that didn't change until the next year, 1930, when you did away with 1874. You did away with, in, in 1919, you taught that Christ became king in 1878 that studies in the scripture volume 4 page 604 and i've got these books if you want scans i can email you the scans when the library's open i've got access to the internet if you if you if you want that um i know you teach now that that that, that christ christ's second presence is 1914 but that only dates from 1930 um and you cover up the 1874 date now I, I know that watchtowers, recent watchtowers, when you when you refer to the second presence of Christ and you refer to the teachings of Pastor Russell, uh, you don't you don't tell people that Russell taught the second presence of Christ was 1874, and it it wasn't done away with until 1930. But you see, you claim that Jesus did this inspection and cleansing work. He cleansed the society of all its errors in 19, 1919. He appointed the Jehovah's Witnesses. And so that's the only government that you can be loyal to. The Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. That's why there's this antagonism and this hatred for all the other religions, which are all part of the Whore of Babylon. That's on Revelation, its grand climax at hand, page 235, which demonizes Christendom, Catholic and Protestant churches. And that's why you have this antagonism, this hatred towards all the governments of the world, including, you know, the British government, which is under the crown. You believe that's of the devil and you believe Mr. Putin's government is under the under the devil as well, because Revelation is grand climax at hand. Page 31, paragraph 11. Jesus never doubted that Satan is the ruler of this world. And on page 252 of Revelation, it's grand climax at hand. You've got a um, picture of seven images representing the seven heads of the satanic wild beast of the book of Revelation. And the first six heads, most biblical scholars would agree that the symbolism uh, from um, the, the symbolism from the book of Daniel does refer to um, six early kingdoms which persecuted God's people, starting with Egypt 
and going through to Greece. There might be some tweaking and a few things might be changed around the scene differently. But, but roughly most biblical scholars would agree with the first six heads of the satanic wild beast, page 252. What I object to is the seventh head being Anglo-America. Again, you're demonising the crown. You, 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 can, can you see the problem, Stelios? You're demonising the British and the American governments and you're saying they are completely of the devil. And that goes back to Judge Rutherford. It's not found in the Bible. Rutherford was imprisoned in 1918 for sedition against uh, the American government. It wasn't overturned till the following year, but when he came out of prison, he had a chip on his shoulder as big as Mount Everest. He hated the American government. And as the British government at the time, Britain was a much more powerful nation 100 years ago than it is now. It was much richer and more powerful. And so he put the two together, Britain and America, and he demonized the pair of them. And Jehovah's Witnesses have followed that for 100 years unthinkingly. But there is no Bible verse which says the British and the American government are demonic. There's no Bible verse that says every single person involved in the British and the American government are demonic. I've mentioned three people who are Christians, who've expressed their faith in Christ. Steve Double, the MP for Snostel and Yuki, Anne Widdicombe, and Her Majesty the Queen. So you've got three people involved in the British government who, who love and serve Christ. Um, so not everyone involved in the British government is of the devil. I, I'm sure there are many people who don't serve Christ in all of the governments of the world. And I would agree there are many people, I'm not going to name any names. Um, well, uh, uh, you know, there, there are many people involved in politics who could well be under the influence of the devil. You know, there have been so many wicked leaders and corrupt politicians. I'm not going to name any names. But here's the thing. There are some good Christian people in the British government, in the American government and in the Russian government. And if you're going to demonize entire governments because you you see, this is the problem. You see the British government and the Russian government and the American government and every government and, and all the churches, the Anglican Church, the Baptist Church, the Catholic Church. This is your problem. You see them as rivals. For what you believe is Jehovah's kingdom or run by Jesus Christ from heaven. But here on earth, that kingdom of God is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, appointed by Jesus, cleansed and appointed by Jesus in 1919. So therefore, any other organisation here on earth is going to be a rival to that. Um, oh, you, you made some, you made some um, very interesting points there, uh, uh, Robert. Um, I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, a Jehovah's Witness from Grinsmead told me the other day that um, William and Kate. Um, he said they seemed a nice couple, okay, and I would agree they they do seem you know um, good people, and William's now working as a helicopter pilot again, isn't he? During during this coronavirus scare, so yeah. you know, um, kudos to him. Uh, that, that's that's a great thing for him to do. But he then turned around and said, despite them being a nice couple, he then turned around and said, but they're still influenced by the devil. <laughs> and he, why did he say they're influenced by the devil? Because he's a Jehovah's Witness. And being a Jehovah's Witness, you have to say the only authority, the only government, the only rule on earth, religious and political, is the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society based at Warwick, New York. And it was appointed by God in 1919. And every government, every king, every queen, every ruler, every prime minister, every president, every MP, and every other religious group, Catholic, Baptist, Pentecostal, whatever, they're all of the devil. That's what your literature has been saying since, since, since the days of Rutherford, a hundred years ago. I mean... If, if I may uh, comment, please. Yes, yeah, um, yes, yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, please. Yeah. Um, first of all, um, um, the, the Bible does say that uh, Satan is the ruler of the world. Now, the, the, the world comprises, uh, I mean, the, the Greek word used cosmos. Um, I mean, in Greek, it, um, it, it basic, basically means an arrangement. I mean, we get the English word cosmetic from it. 
and so it's it's not just simply referring to um, people, but it's it's a general arrangement of things. And quite often, the way the word is used in the scriptures is is with regard to people, uh, and it's used in a number of different ways. Uh, people generally, uh, and then also in a specific sense, where it's used with, with regard to people who don't have a relationship with God. And, uh, exactly. It's got no <laughs> reference to governments. It's got no reference to governments like the British government, the American government, or the Russian government. I'm sorry to inter interrupt I, I, you, Stella. Yeah, I, I, would, I, would, I, I, would, I would agree with you there. Um, um, I mean, just going back to that third temptation that you mentioned where Satan offered him the kingdoms of the world, Jesus refused um, for those. I mean, that showed that Satan had the authority to give them to him. Yeah, he was, if you like, controlling that system of things. Now, uh, Before the resurrection, right. before Christ's death, burial and resurrection, Stelios, Christ said, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Christ overcame the world and the devil. He defeated Satan by his death, burial and resurrection. So even if what you're saying is true in Matthew 4, it is irrelevant today. Even if what you're saying is absolutely true about Matthew 4, it has no relationship to the year 2020 because Satan was defeated at the cross. Satan wasn't the victor at the cross. It was Jesus who was the victor. It was Satan who was, who was defeated. But it seems to me that Jehovah's Witnesses have well, a Satan-centric theology. You're, you're focused on Satan, Satan, Satan all the time. That's all you see. You just see Satan and demons all the time. You see demons under every tree, demons under every rock. Satan is always there trying to get you. You don't have a faith that's focused on Christ and Christ as the vic victor. Colossians 2. Fourteen to fifteen. I'm, I'm sorry, Richard. Uh, sorry, Robert, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Robert. I, I must dis I must disagree there. Um, uh, uh, you've made a number of very sweeping statements with which I, I feel like I cannot agree. Uh, first of all, yes, Jesus did say he had conquered the world. He had proved faithful and uh, died faithfully. I mean, in in the first book of John, chapter 5, uh, uh, we read there that the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. That's your uh, proof text. Yeah. That's, that's your proof text that every government is under the control of Satan. 1 John five nineteen. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's nothing else you've got. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, speaks about uh, Satan misleading the entire inhabited um, earth. So... Uh, so I think you made that you made some interesting statements, but I think in some areas you've perhaps gone a bit too far. As for being uh, our theology being focused on Satan, uh, I, I, I must disagree with that. Uh, um, uh, we, you know, we we focus very much on Jehovah God and Jesus. Uh, Jesus is our exemplar in uh, how we should conduct ourselves and uh, in uh, our manner of life and in our relationship with God. Um, so so I, I feel uh, you, you made a number of sweeping statements with which I, I, I cannot agree. I mean, just going back to, if you like, the original point that you made, and um, uh, if I may explain them, um, Yes, we do feel, we do believe that the world is under Satan's control. Uh, he's, the, he's the one, if you like, the puppeteer that's pulling the strings. Uh, now, that's one thing. To say that uh, individual, individuals in governments are under his control and they're demonized, I, I think that, that would be very presumptuous of, of us to... To say that, we, we are not appointed to judge those sort of things. Um, all the Bible does is help us to identify the sort of people we ought to be uh, and the way we should be conducting our lives, um, accepting the Bible as the Word of God, um, helping others come to know it, um, 
uh, being no part of the world, not getting involved in its political, religious or economic disputes. Uh, but you join um, the United Nations and you're still members of we, OSCE. And that, that was with a particular purpose in mind, with the, with the um, uh, purpose of uh, uh, human rights. And the, the European organisation has proved to be a, a better forum uh, for doing that. Um, and indeed, um, in Europe, uh, we have won many significant victories for human rights uh, in Greece and in a number of other countries. Um, also, we, we've won victories in the European court that have a bearing on Russia, but... Uh, but Russia, the Russian government hasn't hasn't um, abided by them. But that's but so arguing from the, the general that the whole world is in the power of Satan and Satan is the ruler of the world um, is is one thing. And taking it to individuals. Uh, that's very presumptuous of us. Now, I, I no, can't, you take it to organisations. You take 1 John 5.19 to organisations. You say every organisation, every government and every religion on earth is of the devil because you misquote 1 John 5.19, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Do you mind if we look at that verse and start at verse 18 and look at it? Yes, no, that's, that's yeah. fine. Um, it's clearly talking about individuals. It's got nothing to do yes. with governments. This has got, you can't say the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one and whole world applies to the British government, the Russian government or the American government because the whole context is well, individuals. It's a contrast it, between... I, 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 agree with, I agree with you, um, it's a, um, Robert. Well, I'm going to read it. Um, I, I'm going to read it because no. we have to read the scriptures to, to understand it. I feel that Matthew 4 is a waste of time because that's before Christ's death, burial and resurrection. And whatever happened in Matthew 4, and I think it's the um, um, Col Colossians 2, 14, talks about Jesus defeating Satan through his resurrection. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, that which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. And it would be the, the tree, Christ's death, burial and resurrection. That's how Satan was defeated. Now, Satan does not rule the kingdoms of this world. Even in Matthew 4, he doesn't, because we read in many passages in the Old Testament, Psalm 24, 1, that the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. God owns this world, not Satan. And Psalm, Psalm 55 says something similar, if I can find it. Um, round about verse... Uh, Psalm 55 I can't I can't remember where it is perhaps it's Psalm 50 no, I, I don't, I don't, but 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 Psalm Psalm 24 verse 1 and it's repeated in in, in in other Psalms the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein all that Satan offered in Matthew 4 was for Jesus to bypass his death, burial and resurrection, a painful, painful death on the tree. And Satan offered him the kingdoms of the world and, and, and their glory. So it was the people who Satan was ruling over, rebels against God, who Satan was, was offering um, to Christ as a means of bypassing the cross. But this earth does not belong to Satan. He doesn't own one square metre of this planet. He owns nothing. All his God are those people who are in rebellion to him. J Jesus, yeah. de Jesus prophesied that he would defeat uh, Satan through his resurrection. That's John sixteen thirty three. I have overcome the world. So Satan offered him the world. But Jesus says, John sixteen thirty three, prophetically speaking, I have overcome the world. Meaning he's going to over overcome Satan's rule, Satan's rebellion through his death, burial and resurrection. Clearly, Jesus defeated Satan, Colossians 2, 15 and 16, 
14 and 15, um, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, that's the devil, triumphing over them in it, that's the tree. The tree which symbolizes Christ's death, burial and resurrection. When you go to 1 John 5, 18 and 19, it's simply a contrast between two groups of individuals. Individuals who've been born of God and individuals who haven't been born of God. I'll read it if you don't mind. But point at, I'd like to point out that we know is a first person plural. Okay, first person plural. Paul is identifying himself with his readers. He's not saying you plural no. He's saying we know, identifying himself with his readers um, who are Christians. If this was a reference to governments, then the third person plural they know would be used. So if Paul wished to say the whole world, meaning the government in Gaul and the government in Rome and the government in, in Egypt or all of the devil, uh, because Paul and his readers have no active part in that government, he would have said they know third person plural but he doesn't he uses first person plural so this is a reference to individuals not to governments 1 john 5 18 we know that whoever is born of god does not sin which means practice sin in the greek but he who has been born of god and of course only individuals are born of god governments can't be born of god you can't have the government in gaul born of god you can't have the government in rome born of god individuals are born of god but he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God. We know, first person plural, Paul identifying himself with the readers. Christians are born of God. That's Paul's first point. And the second point is the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Simply those individuals who haven't been born of God. It's simply a contrast between two groups of individuals. It's got nothing to do with the government of Britain or the government of France or the government of Russia or the government of America. But in your literature, and I, I see it here on page 32, at the bottom of paragraph 12, it says, quote, the whole world is lying under the power of the wicked one. 1 John 5, 19. And it's a, misapplying this verse to governments as a proof text that every government on earth is of the devil because of this proof text which has got nothing to do with governments it's individuals we know first person plural that we are of god if it referred yes. to governments it would be they know yes so I, I i understand the point you're making and i i have no fundamental disagreement with anything you've you've said there i mean uh, i mean in in the end the um the, the whole obligation of, of all mankind is to uh, be serving God and uh, and doing God's will. Um, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we uh, uh, accept the fact that Jehovah God created the earth and everything in it, and he put mankind up here for a specific purpose, to, uh, to do his will mm -hmm. and fulfill mm -hmm. his will. Um, and we know what happened in the Garden of Eden and the, the reasons why Jesus came to the earth. And uh, and uh, and Jesus quite clearly said in the Sermon on the Mount, the, the, uh, um, at the end of the sermon, um, not everybody saying to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only the one doing the will of my father. Uh, that same point is basically reiterated in 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. He that does the will of God remains forever. So, so if we step back from... If we step back mm -hmm. uh, from if it, some of the things that you've been mentioning, you know, what we need to be asking ourselves... Are religions doing the will of God? Are governments doing the will of God? Is the economic system uh, fulfilling the will of God? And and as, as I see it, the, the answer to that is is basically no. Um, I believe we as Jehovah's Witnesses are attempting to fulfill the will of God, and uh, you know, uh, and I think you'd expect me to say that. Um, I don't see other religions doing that, and I certainly don't see governments doing it. Um, um, 
but uh, as for individuals within governments, uh, uh, within religions, I would consider it very presumptuous to say that person is under the influence of the devil and this one isn't and uh, uh, that would be that would be a very wrong thing to do in the end it's uh, jesus he's the he's he's the appointed judge um, um no that's not accurate according to the watchtower the Watchtower for the 15th of November, 1981, page 21, says, quote, And while now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's Organization for salvation. Now, there are several other Watchtowers around that period um, that say the same thing, and I, I can't quote them all from memory. But that Watchtower says, quote, And while now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's Organization for salvation. So unless you're an active Jehovah's Witness, baptised, active Jehovah's Witness in good standing, giving regular field service reports, you cannot serve Jehovah God and you will be annihilated at Armageddon according to the teachings of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Because there is no salvation outside of Jehovah's organisation, according to the Watchtower. Yes, no, I understand that. And I, I would... I personally would uh, would agree with that. Uh, and when it comes to the end of this, uh, the end of the system, I think the point about field service reports. I don't think that was actually mentioned in in the Watchtower. Not in that Again, one, but in recent in recent ones, you've 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 made the rules more strict. Simply being a baptized Jehovah's Witness and attending all the meetings at the Kingdom Hall are not enough now. You need to actually be in good standing, which means submitting service, field service reports. Well, uh, I think... Uh, Otherwise, you're not regarded as a Jehovah's Witness if you don't s submit regular field service reports. Well, um, the, the important thing is to be telling others about our faith and, uh, and living clean moral lives. Uh, if we're not living clean moral lives, we, we can be submitting, you know, service reports with with glowing glowing figures. But if our lives are not clean and in line with Bible principles, then those our, our, our service means nothing. Jehovah's you know, Witnesses so. are in the newspaper and on TV an awful lot recently, aren't you? The newspapers are constantly um, reporting things that are happening in Kingdom Halls around the world. Um, I'll take your word for that. I personally haven't seen any any reports, but um, I, 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 I would take your word for that. Mm. Um, you mentioned Matthew 7.21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my kingdom in, does the will of my Father in heaven. So it's doing the will of the Father that's important, yes? Yes, absolutely. Um, but John 5, I'll read verse 23, but I'll read 22 first. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son that all should honour the Son just as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. So, yes, um, many religious people, I will agree with you. Um, they don't live the life. That's one reason why I gave up on church. I would have ended, I would have ended up in a mental hospital. Because if I'm going to follow Christ, I want to do it. I want to be committed. And I found that when I attended um, evangelical churches in Plymouth, um, I gave up in 1991 when I was told at St. Austell Baptist Church by my home group leaders that the Trinity was pagan, the Baptist didn't baptise correctly, and um, the Son of God was not eternal. He was, he was begotten, by which they meant created. Um, and that was a, a Baptist union of Great Britain and Northern Ireland Church. And I came to the conclusion, they're just idiots. They, these people are idiots. They're just making it up as they go along. Um, I moved to Plymouth in about 2004 and I, I tried attending churches again and I, I gave up with the exception of three Alpha meeting, Alpha course meetings in 2012 at Plymouth Christian Centre, during which I was told that Jesus made two atonements. He made an atonement on the cross and then he went to hell and made a spiritual atonement to the devil. 
Um, and I was also told um, that uh, on the Alpha, that Alpha course that Jesus is God the Father. That's the Trinity. That's what the Trinity teaches, they told me. Jesus is God the Father. I complained to the head of the Alpha course. Uh, I think she was called Liz. I think the table leader was Janet or Janice. Um, I then complained to Liz. She said, yes, Jesus is God the Father. I wrote to the pastor reverently twice. He never replied. I wrote to the head of the whole denomination, the Elim Pentecostal Church, of which Plymouth Christian Centre is a part, John Glass. He wrote me two lines. I'll get back to you when I've looked into this. He never did. Um, no, I, I more or less gave up in 2010. I came to the conclusion they're just a bunch of clueless idiots who'll make it up as they go along. And um, I'm, ne I'm never going to change these people. They're, ne they're not going to listen to me. Um, so, um, y you know, um, that's the problem with a lot of religious people. They do religious things, but they do not honour the Son just as they honour the Father. No Bible verse says Jesus is God the Father. That's the heresy of modalism. And yet many evangelicals are really modalists. They're not Trinitarians. They'll stick something on the church website that is, they've copied and pasted that is pretty good and pretty accurate, which I would agree with. But when you actually speak to the leaders themselves, um, they, they don't actually, they're not actually Trinitarians. Um, they're usually modalists or tritheists. And I, I came to the conclusion that most of it was just a total waste of my time. I, if I attended, carried on attending, I would have ended up in a mental hospital. Uh, honestly, I would have ended up slashing my wrists or something because I just couldn't cope with the pressure. And no one will accept correction. So, look, yes, there are many, many people who say Matthew 7.21. Um, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will in will of my father in heaven but the will of the father is that all should honor the son just as they honor the father john five twenty three. he who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him now in the watchtower's history you taught at one time and i've got the books i've got the literature that jesus christ became the almighty god at his resurrection that's what you were teaching in 1919 when jesus supposedly chose the watchtower society brian bible teachers manual page 454 i've also got the finished mystery page 15 and page 240 they say that jesus christ is the almighty god and um, um it's also in several several watchtowers of around the, of around the time um that's what you were teaching 100 years ago i know you don't teach that now you now teach something different to that but in 1919 again i've got the finished mystery Page 159 says Apollyon is the devil. Apollyon is a, a name for a Satan or possibly one of his chief demons, who, but probably Satan, who comes up out of the bottomless pit in Revelation 9 with a demonic horde to deceive mankind. Well, in your book, The Finished Mystery, which I've got, published in 1917, you say on page 159 that, that Satan is Apollyon, right? Apollyon comes from the Greek god Apollo. It's a derivative of the Greek god Apollo. And you say that Apollyon is the devil. And most Christian commentators that I, I, I know would say the same thing. They nearly all say that Apollyon is the name for the devil. But some of them might say, oh, Ap Apollyon could be one of his more, more chief or senior demons. Then in 1969, the Jehovah's Witnesses had an about turn. In a book called Then is Finished, The Mystery of God, page 232, you now said that G Jesus, the glorified Jesus Christ is Apollyon. And that teaching is on your website, because if you go to the Insight book, Insight on the Scriptures, volume 1, page 126, it says that Jesus Christ, the glorified Jesus Christ is Apollyon. Now, and, and, the, and the reasons for that are actually explained as well. Jesus Christ is not the devil from the bottomless pit. John 5.23 says that all should honour the Son just as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. If we don't honour the Son, our whole faith is worthless. It doesn't matter how many meetings we do. It doesn't matter if we wear suit and suits and ties. It doesn't matter how much field service we do. If we're preaching the wrong message on who Christ is, our faith is worthless. 
we, you know, you might as well be a, a drugs, a drugs dealer <laughs> because you're going to be, and I'm not advocating people become a drugs dealer because drugs are a terrible thing, but you will be more severely punished by God at the judgment for teaching wrong views at Jesus Christ. Here's my point than a prostitute or a drugs dealer. So you're better off as a as being a prostitute or being a drugs dealer, because when you stand before God at the judgment, you will be more severely punished if you teach wrong views about Jesus Christ. And the Watchtower, you used to teach that Christ became the Almighty God at His resurrection. That's Berean Bible Teachers Manual, published 1909, page 454. That's not the Trinity. The Trinity teaches that Christ is eternally uh, Yahweh God. He's, he's eternally the almighty God, right? But now you've abandoned the claim that Jesus became the almighty God at his resurrection. So there's changes there, significant changes in who Jesus Christ is. And in 1919, you taught that Apollyon was the devil, which I would agree with. But now from 1969, You've changed that view. You now teach that Apollyon is Jesus Christ. And, and here's the warning that all should honour the Son just as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. John 5.23. You've got to honour the Son, Stelios. Otherwise your faith is pointless. Yeah, you... no, I, 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 I agree. I agree with you. Um, I personally would say that... Uh, uh, we as Jehovah's Witnesses do honour the Son. He 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 plays a pivotal role in the outworking of uh, Jehovah God's purpose towards the earth. Um, uh, you know, we can only approach uh, uh, the Father through through the Son. Um, uh, Look. Uh, um, We've we've talked for nearly an hour and I'm getting very, very tired and I'm finding it difficult to concentrate. Why don't we leave it there? And if you want to talk again, would it be possible to discuss the Trinity? I explained to you why I believe the Trinity and only the Trinitarian position honours the Son. And you give okay. me any argument you like against the Trinity and I'll try and answer it. I won't duck anything. You put me on the spot. You ask me questions. points on the in the Bible teach book regarding the Trinity can you tell me specifically which ones um, you uh, you have in mind and then uh, I can uh, look those up and uh, come back to you um, I also come back to you on Apollyon as well yes sure <laughs> sure um, off the top of my head I oh. I've got an old yellow copy of What Does the Bible Teach? And I put post-it notes. I've taped them to the side of this book. But unfortunately, um, half of the post-it note has been torn away. It's been fingered so many times, the post-it note is just ripped away. Uh, and if, I, I, if you could see this book, it's got literally about 50, 60 post-it notes uh, sellotaped to the book of which some of the post-it notes are just unreadable and some of them are torn up, torn off. Um, I do know that your tr brochure on the Trinity misdefines the Trinity as modalism. Now, I am a passionate, zealous hater of modalism. I was a modalist in the 1980s. I was converted into a cult called Oneness or Jesus Only, the apostolic movement. That was a movement that taught that Jesus was God the Father. So when I left that in 1989, I became a very, very zealous Trinitarian. Um, I believe that modalism, the heresy, which is the heresy that Jesus is God the Father, which I see everywhere in evangelicalism, um, needs to be opposed. Um, so I can't quote the page numbers in the Trinity brochure, but the Trinity brochure assumes that the Trinity teaches that Jesus is God the Father, and it doesn't. That's a straw man argument. That's 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 modalism. Um, I think that um, I'm looking at page forty one. I think the main thing to deal with is that firstborn of all creation in Colossians one fifteen, prototokos, firstborn, 
does yes. not mean first created, which is protokistos. Yes. Right. Um, and if I could leave you, if you've got a pen, if I could leave you with this thought, firstborn cannot mean first created because yes. David is the youngest son of Jesse, 1 Samuel seventeen fourteen. But David is called the firstborn, prototokos, and I'm quoting from the Greek Septuagint, because you should know the Hebrew was translated into yeah. Greek. At Psalm eighty nine twenty seven, David's called firstborn, prototokos, but David is the youngest, not the eldest son of Jesse in one Samuel seventeen fourteen. So how can David be born how can prototokos mean born first? When David yeah. is prototokos, firstborn, but he's the youngest son of Jesse. Also, the twins, Manasseh and Ephraim, I'm sure you remember, Manasseh came out of the womb first. Yes. Genesis 41, 51, Manasseh is called the firstborn because he came out of the womb first, which refers to the right of primogenitor. The eldest son has inheritance rights. Yeah? But because of his yeah. sin, he lost that inheritance right. And so in Jeremiah 31, 9, Ephraim is called firstborn. Right. Israel is called firstborn in Exodus 4.22. Now, how can two million people, the nation of Israel, all come out of the same woman's womb at the same time? That would be a very painful birth. Indeed. So which, which verse was that? Um, um, which verse did you have in, did you mention? I, I, I think it's Colossians 1.15 we need to look at. Firstborn of all creation does not mean that Christ is created. Obviously, yes. Christ's human nature is created, but I'm now getting very, very tired and I'm finding it difficult to concentrate. And yeah, I think no, it I might think... be best to leave it. Um, I can speak to you. I tend to go to the shops. Uh, I go for a, a sort of afternoon walk and I go, I go to the shops usually between 4.30 and 6. And then from 6 to 6.30, I listen to the news. So best not to speak to me between 4.30 and 6.30 during the lockdown. But um, basically, I don't have a family, so any other time to suit you, as long as you text me and give me notice and make it clear who you are. Otherwise, because yeah. uh, I'm speaking to a few different people at the moment, I'm speaking to Pentecostals and Baptists as well. Yeah, OK, no, thank, thank you, uh, uh, Robert. It's been nice speaking with you, and uh, um, I, 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 I just... I mean, I'm happy to take up these points that you mentioned. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm more than delighted to have Bible conversations, Bible-based conversations, and uh, with a view to understanding the Scriptures uh, better. Um, we can never go wrong if we do that. OK. Thank you, Stelios. All right. Thank you. Lovely speaking with you. Lovely speaking to you too. Bye. Yeah, bye for now. Bye.